In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I'd love to use this time to give you a triptych of our family, the Moss family adventure. Uh, we were in, uh, my wife was uh, working in Quito for a week, and so we uh, used that as a jumping board for a family trip to the Galapagos, of which we got back uh, to the house at around 1 a.m. Uh, last night. Um, but the readings don't lend themselves to a pleasant triptych of the Moss family adventures. Um, but they are full. They are full readings. Neither do the events of the last week uh, lead themselves to be forgotten for the sake of you hearing about my adventures. Uh, but I will begin with a little bit about them. So we, 24 hours ago, uh, right now, uh, we're in the Andes Mountains on a gondola overlooking the city of Quito. So it's hard to believe that 24 hours later we are here. Uh, and 24 hours before that, uh, we were walking the shores of the Galapagos Islands uh, early in the morning as the fishermen had just come in uh, with their morning catch and the pelicans and the sea lions uh, and the, the, um, uh, all of the tropical birds of the Galapagos were anxiously uh, awaiting any treats that might be left uh, from the fishermen as they cleaned the fish. Um, and then only 24 hours before that, um, we were walking on an island that looked like it was a different planet. Uh, it was entirely made of, uh, of uh, quickly uh, cooled lava and, and really did look like something out of Mars. And as we walked to the, the very top uh, of this black and, and red earth, um, uh, where, where the cactus, even the cactus were, uh, were gray, uh, we could see all of the islands around us uh, from the top, uh, and it just, uh, right there on the equator, uh, looked like a totally different world. And then later that day, we went snorkeling, and uh, besides us, as we were, I, I am giving you a triptych, uh, 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 as we were uh, snorkeling, uh, right beside me to the left, was a penguin uh, that we didn't expect to see because uh, of the warm waters uh, swimming right beside us. Um, there were stingrays, beautiful stingrays, uh, uh, sea turtles. Uh, uh, they are every bit as relaxed as, uh, uh, as they're portrayed in, in, um, uh, in Nemo, and uh, Finding Nemo. And, and pretty much the entire cast, except for clownfish, uh, schools of fish swimming around us. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. Sea lions practically nudging up against us, um, and uh, even, uh, even the occasional shark swimming around. And, um, and I started thinking about that part of it. Uh, that's the part that's somewhat coming back towards the gospel today. Uh, so we're swimming with sharks, and uh, Liz Hamilton told me uh, that we'd be swimming with sharks rather matter-of-factly. She said, but you know, not at feeding times or anything like that. And I said, of course not. That would be ridiculous. Um, and we're swimming with sharks, and at first they seem far enough beneath us um, that it almost looks like it, it might as well be a glass case and we're just walking on top of it. Uh, but as the week went on and we went snorkeling more and more, uh, we, the, the glass case was removed and we were all on the same plane with some of these sharks. At one point, with all of the coral, uh, I realized there wasn't really a, a way for us to pass without the, the shark running into me. And so I uh, quickly threw myself against the coral so that the shark could pass um, without interruption. Uh, and I thought to myself, I hope I don't get eaten by a shark. <laughs> but if I do, uh, I imagine their first response would be like, oh, that is so sad, Father Ben. Um, he was an okay priest, uh, you know, we're sad to see him go. Um, and then as more news broke and they said, well, he was swimming with sharks, they'd say, well, you know, not the wisest thing to do, but, you know, still a good bloke. Uh, and, uh, and then as they said, well, he was swimming towards the sharks uh, as he saw them, I think they would uh, all of a sudden say, well, of course he got bit by a shark. Uh, and then as the story went on, and uh, they heard that my daughter was very apprehensive about uh, swimming with sharks. I mean, who would have thunk? Um, and, uh, but coaxed and encouraged by her parents uh, to, to, to get in the water. Uh, and, uh, and as we were cheering that she, by the end of the week, uh, was, was as anxiously pursuing the sharks as we were, uh, I think people's impression of 
uh, of me as the primary care provider for my children uh, as I was eaten. My obituary is getting worse by the minute. Uh, uh, all this to say, most of us don't set out to do those heinous things uh, that people do in this world. Most of us don't set out uh, to break people's heart. Most of us don't set out uh, to hurt or wrong people in profound ways. Uh, and God knows that about us. God knows that our hearts uh, are true. But God knows that we take, step, we take little steps in the wrong direction. We make little fissures in relationships. And those fissures uh, start to vibrate and they become cracks. And then cracks uh, uh, start to hurt. And, and then they become chasms. And before we know it, we have sworn enemies with people, uh, usually, who were closest to us at some point in time. And we don't set out uh, uh, to make vows in front of God and all the people that we care about uh, forever and ever. Uh, and then go and wander, uh, it doesn't start that way. It starts uh, with the person that we've made lifelong vows to, knowing so much about us that they know our warts as well uh, as the parts that we like to uh, lead with. Uh, and, uh, and, and they're also inclined to give us those lists of things they'd like to see us do and responsibilities. Uh, and, um, and, and they call us to task because we need to be called to task. Uh, and so sometimes it's more uh, alluring to, to look in another direction at somebody who still looks at you uh, like that suave person that your, your, your wife was first attracted to, uh, who doesn't give you a list of things to do, uh, for whom you can be a different person. And as you look in that direction a little longer, as you neglect this primary relationship, you wander a little bit farther and a little bit farther, uh, and those little footsteps uh, become fissures. Most people don't get eaten by sharks living in Fauquier County, staying on their farm. Uh, they find themselves swimming with sharks, and then not just swimming with sharks, but swimming up to sharks uh, to see closer what exactly kind of uh, markings they have. Is it a white, uh, is it a white tail, uh, white uh, point shark, uh, or a black point shark, or a Galapagos shark? Um, I bring this up to, to say that Jesus knows our hearts. Jesus gave us uh, uh, the word before time, gave us all of the freedoms in the world. And really, one overarching law, encompassed in over 600 of them, but one overarching law, to love our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbor as ourselves. Easy enough, right? But God knew that we sometimes make little, little steps, little tiptoe steps in the wrong direction, which lead to bigger steps, which lead to places where we can't get out of which lead to fissures, which leads to cracks, which leads to chasms. And so Jesus walks us step by step in how to live more fully into that one great law, that one great truth. When I go and talk to the third graders about the law and why there were so many and why it's all encompassed in one, uh, we talk about the kindergartners or the preschoolers and uh, how they have class rules like don't bite one another, uh, don't pull hair, uh, don't eat glue. And I ask the, the, the third graders, why don't they have any uh, rules like that? And they look at us, uh, look at me like I'm ridiculous because we're third graders, because we know everything. And, then, uh, you know, um, and they, they say, well, because respecting one another um, and respecting the classroom, you know, encompasses all of it. But sometimes we still eat glue, uh, you know, and, uh, and I think that's what Jesus is walking us through. Um, and an important part of, of today's lesson, how do we walk in faith, uh, knowing that we're, the freedom that we're given makes us prone to make mistakes, uh, to wandering. So at first, as I was uh, in the Galapagos, and I did most of uh, my research and reading before, knowing that I would get back uh, in the middle of the morning, the night, uh, the morning before I needed to be here, uh, I think my, my wife did the travel schedule, and I think she saw the long weekend and the chance to recover afterwards. So, um, and I kept thinking during my time there, what, what, what's striking me? And first it was um, being in a place that has changed so much. Uh, being in a place uh, that is uh, one of the most preserved places on earth. And if that's one of the most preserved places on earth, we have problems uh, because the animal populations are plummeting 
there, uh, despite a tremendous amount of, of work to protect them. The, the population of people, and what I had thought before I went there, uh, was, was, was as remote as just about anywhere, uh, is, is escalating. Uh, and uh, uh, because of the rising uh, temperatures of the water, uh, animals uh, are, 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 are traveling different patterns, and, uh, and it is uh, ever, ever more difficult uh, to monitor uh, the, the wildlife there in the Galapagos. Uh, there are tremendous success stories. But as I started to think about all of the consequences of our actions, because none of us set out to hurt a beautiful sea turtle or a giant uh, Galapagos turtle or uh, any of the majestic wildlife there, our actions, our little uh, missteps uh, have consequences. But as I uh, picked up my stones and started to put them uh, together uh, to talk about that, I started to realize that one of the most uh, consequential uh, actions uh, that happen in the Galapagos are that of tourists. That our presence there uh, creates anxiety and uh, uh, means that a lot of the nesting places that are along walkways that, that, that the tourists uh, inhabit uh, are no longer suitable for, uh, for nesting. Uh, that a lot of the ships and the gas and all of the uh, uh, effect and, and sometimes hit and scrape the sea lions as they come by. Um, that uh, the, the water and all of the, the food that has to be shipped to the island has a tremendous consequence. And I realized as I'm holding these stones that I am as big a culprit as any uh, for having uh, uh, gone there as a tourist. And I put down those rocks. Um, and as the week went on, um, my uh, dad uh, texted me that Fauquier County made the uh, national news um, all the way down in Florida. And uh, um, a, a local pastor uh, from this town uh, had made a uh, uh, a prayer at the uh, at down in Richmond at the at at at, at the the, the uh, assembly, uh, and it concerned me because this is my town, and because this is my vocation, uh, and one of the things that I struggle with, despite our differences in belief, uh, that people who haven't come to church have three. Uh, the top things that they attribute to church. Number one is judgmental. Number two is anti-gay. And number three is hypocritical. And so whatever our differences may be theologically, I think the world is thirsty, is desperately thirsty for more grace, more love, more assurances that we are made in God's image, more assurances uh, that God uh, has entrusted us to take care of this fragile earth, our island home, uh, more encouragement uh, that with God's help we can do amazing things. I think we need a lot more of that messaging than those that diminish or pass judgment. Uh, and as I picked up my pieces of scripture to refute uh, the other pieces of scripture, I found that I had uh, my hands filled uh, with these stones again. And so I put them down and continued on my trip. And then as uh, I reached the airport uh, to travel home yesterday, uh, I kept getting some uh, disturbing uh, an email and then uh, some other notices uh, about what took place Friday night. A boy a boy still, a boy, 17 years old, who uh, took the life, they believe, took the life of his, his mother and sibling, uh, shot his father and fled. And we don't know all of the details. We don't know, certainly, even as we know some more details, we certainly have no idea uh, what was going on in his heart, uh, in his head, uh, in his state of mind. Uh, but we do know there was a cost, and, and we do know that this community lived in a tremendous amount of both pain and anxiety uh, as he was at large uh, while we were traveling. Uh, and I, 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 I started thinking about these baby steps that Jesus encourages us to walk on. Uh, and we like to talk about these issues uh, of gun violence uh, in, in huge issues. Uh, it's a mental health issue. No, it's not. It's a gun issue. Uh, and then we, we find ourselves absolutely polarized and motionless. Instead of trying to listen to what God might be calling us to do, what footsteps we might take towards healing. And I don't know all the answers. I have no idea what was going on in this young man's fragile brain uh, and mind and heart. I don't know uh, the solutions, but I know that we are absolutely motionless uh, because of the way that we 
understand and fight about these issues, and I do know the world needs footsteps towards healing, towards grace, towards love, towards the things that Jesus calls us to. And so when I hear this passage, and I hear this very difficult passage about cutting out your eye or cutting off a member, I hear Jesus saying, I know you. I know I've given you profound freedoms, but I love you enough to hold your hand and teach you what little steps you have to take so that you can put down those rocks that are in your hands, so that you can soften your heart, and so that you can live the life that I've called you to live, so that you can understand what it is to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor, which includes your enemy, as yourself. So walk with me. Amen.